Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Let's talk about different bass trap shapes. Maybe you're on the lookout for a particular bass trap for your room, or you want to build some bass traps yourself. And as you're looking through the different kind of designs out there, what people recommend, what people have built, what companies sell, you come across all these different shapes, right? So you get just kind of square soffit style bass traps that you put in the corners of your room, but you can also get triangular bass traps, sometimes called super chunks if you build them yourself. Sometimes you get panels that are kind of tapered so they fit inside the corner. And then obviously there are just regular panels that you can also put across the corner, but also just put on the wall. Which of these designs, which of these shapes actually performs best? That's the question that I want to answer in this video. And it's funny because I remember when I was first looking at this and trying to figure out what they actually do. And I kept thinking kind of what's the secret sauce? <laughs> what's, what's the secret they're not telling me about these different shapes? Why why do they even exist? What's the difference between all of them? And it seems like there's no real answer out there. Some people swear on this shape, some people swear on this shape, but it's really hard to tell what the difference actually is between these two. And it's only when I really understood the fundamentals of acoustics and tried different designs that I figured out what the secret sauce is and that is that there is none. This is literally just a question of priorities, depending on how much effectiveness you want and how much space you're willing to sacrifice and how much money you're willing to invest. But in order for you to understand that, we have to actually have to go back to the fundamentals to understand how base absorption, how absorption in general actually works. Of course, if you want to dive even deeper and really understand what all these different bass trap designs out there do, I've compiled the complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping that you can get completely for free at the link in the description. I've compiled this as kind of an encyclopedia to guide you through understanding what porous absorber traps do, what resonance absorber traps do, so Helmholtz resonators, membrane traps, that sort of thing, combine traps, and really get an idea of what it is you're looking at if you're kind of checking out different designs, how they work, how you're supposed to use them in your room, how many you would need, and ultimately just to figure out which one is the right one for you. So if you really want to understand what it is you're looking at, make sure you download my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping at the link in the description. Okay, so let's get into it. The first and really only and fundamental thing that you need to understand is that how well an absorber absorbs sound is determined by two factors. So the absorption coefficient of your absorber, and that is basically the depth from the surface of the absorber to the reflecting wall behind it. That's the first number multiplied by the actual surface area that the sound needs to go through in order to basically then get reflected off of the wall behind it, right? So it's these two numbers. It's the absorption coefficient, which is determined primarily by the depth of your absor absorber core, and then how wide and tall your absorber is and how much surface area that creates that sound has to go through. I made a whole other video about this, so if you want some more details on that, check that out in the card right now. But so given this simple formula, we can estimate which absorber shape probably absorbs best. And so if we look at these different shapes, I've made these very simple diagrams here. So we're looking at the corner of a room, kind of looking down from the top. We've got our square soffit style trap on the left. We've got our super chunk triangular trap in the middle, and then just a panel across a corner, placed across a corner on the right. If we look at these and we try and think about these two numbers that determine how well an absorber absorbs sound, the square soffit style trap is actually going to perform best. 
Why? Because it gives us the best in terms of these two numbers. On one hand, it gives us a lot of surface area that the sound has to go through, right? So imagine the sound kind of, kind of coming in from the left here. It has to travel through the entire material core to hit the wall. That same surface area, obviously, from if the, the sound is coming from the bottom up, yeah? And then the second part of this is the, that the, the depth is consistent throughout. Yeah, no matter where the sound hits this particular absorber, it's going to have to go through the entire depth of this material core. That's why it performs best. If we compare that to the triangular kind of super chunk style trap, it offers less surface area, right? So, and by the way, I've kind of tried to lay these out in a way so that they're roughly the same size whatever that means, yeah? But so given that the surface area of our triangular trap is less than with the square style trap, and also depending on where the sound actually hits this absorber, it doesn't see the entire depth of this, this uh, absorber core. If it hits this absorber kind of towards the, the end of the triangle, it only has to go through a tiny amount of absorber material. And so actually the low frequency extension of this absorber isn't that great. And if we look at the panel on the right, it's kind of similar to the triangular trap, right? So the, the depth actually varies depending on where the sound enters the panel. And then also it doesn't give us as much surface area as the square soffit style trap. So given this kind of configuration, we can see that purely from this, these based on these two numbers, the square soffit style trap is going to perform best because it offers a consistent depth and the most surface area. But let's bring in a new requirement, and that is that all three styles, all three shapes, have to actually use the same amount of insulation material, aka the volume used by the insulation material is the same. And I've tried to kind of mimic that, show that with these three designs, right? So the triangular trap now roughly has the same volume of insulation material as the square soffit trap and the panel also has roughly the same volume of insulation material used as the square soffit trap. And now things change, right? For one, the triangular trap obviously gets bigger, so it covers or it offers more surface area for the sound to go through, probably still not quite as much as the square soffit style trap, but it's definitely a lot better. But the real big winner here now is the panel because we're using all that volume to cover a much larger surface area or to create a much larger surface area for sound to go through. And on top of that, because of the panel design, there's kind of this hollow space behind the panel, right? So between the absorber and the wall. And interestingly enough, this still counts as part of the overall depth of our absorber. So we're still getting a really good low frequency absorption coefficient with this, this type of panel design because that hollow space, that air gap still counts towards the overall depth of our absorber. And so now suddenly the panel design actually offers greater depth than both the triangular super chunk and the square soffit style trap, given the same amount of insulation material used. And on top of that, it actually gives us the same amount of surface area as the square uh, soffit style trap, because basically what we're doing is just chopping that in half and then rearranging it with the two halves next to each other. Yeah, so that's kind of what this is. So now, with this requirement of using the same amount of insulation material, our 
rectangular panel actually performs best. Of course, that is only because we're using that air gap to our advantage. If we were to make a square soffit style trap like the one on the left, but basically give it the same depth that our panel creates in terms of distance to the wall, then the square soffit style trap is once again going to outperform our panel. So as you can see, this is a question of priorities more than anything. Do you want the best performer purely from an acoustics perspective? Then you want to go for the square soffit style absorber, but it comes at the cost of having to use a lot more absorption material, insulation material, in order to create the same depth and therefore low frequency performance as a comparative panel that you simply place across the corner. So if you want the best bang for the buck, instead you want to go for the panel because you're leveraging the air gap to basically increase the depth of your absorber. And so you can get away with using a lot less material, which obviously also reduces the cost of this particular type of absorber. Figuring out that balancing act between performance versus use of space versus budget really is the kind of point of my Build a Better Base Trap course, obviously ultimately with the goal of giving you a low end that you can trust in your studio. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But hopefully that gives you a better understanding of why these different shapes exist and what you should choose for your room. It's a matter of priorities. Do you prioritize space? Do you prioritize effectiveness? Do you prioritize cost? Yeah, each of those will give you a different answer in terms of which type of base trap is best for your room. But with that, let's keep learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. That's what it's all about. I'll see you in the next video.